All right, everybody, welcome back to Versus Live. My name's Corey Ballmeister. And I'm Ross Merriam. And we got Rob in the booth. Say what's up, Rob. What's up, Rob? Rob, we'll be taking all your questions, comments, concerns, and burns in the chat. Make sure to tag at Star City Games so he can get his favorite ones sent over to us. All right, everyone, we are continuing our exploration of all these formats. After the huge ban announcement that we got a couple weeks ago, Modern still looks great, Pioneer looks great, Standard is the healthiest it's been in a while. The limited format's pretty fun. I know you haven't played much Cal time, but overall, a great time. Overall, a great time uh, for Magic, that's for sure. So we're going to be um, spending some time on Modern for the rest of the day. Uh, Ross took down the first match. Now I'm going to be moving on to everybody's absolute favorite deck to play against, right? Any kind of Eldrazi uh, lands here. And uh, we had so much fun when I played Tron against you last time. And, and now, you know, it, it became a meme that you shouldn't be playing Tron or, or whatever was going on last week. That was pretty, uh, that was pretty hilarious. Um, you know, Tron, uh, Tron always gets a bad rap, but you know what? It's still a strong deck. It's fun. I thoroughly enjoy playing it. Eldrazi Tron, especially because you get some, some little variety. You just get so many different draws because you're really combining multiple decks into one. Uh, so it leads for some fun, uh, some fun. I, magic. I actually find Eldrazi Tron significantly more annoying to play against. Yeah. You know, Mono Green Tron, they are trying really hard. Yeah. Putting yeah. Sylvan Scrying and Chromatic Star into your deck. You know, they're trying really hard. They deserve to Tron. Yeah, Anytime yeah. my Eldrazi Tron opponents assemble Tron, I'm just mad at them. Yes, of course. Like, you do course. not deserve this. You, you have threw... not worked hard enough. What, do you got three maps in there? You, know? <laughs> you do not deserve this at yes, all. And so yes. they just have a million mana, mm -hmm. and they like Walking Ballista for 12, or they play Karn, and, yeah, you know, yeah. find whatever, you know, artifact I can't ever beat in a million years. Exactly. Or you get two matter reshapers. There yes, we go. Or yeah. two matter reshapers. Which is unbeatable. Three mana, three two, <laughs> and the deck does a lot of nothing. But this was one of the decks that I think thrived the most. Not because it like got into skyrocket into tier one or whatever, but it was like at a lonely tier four, and you know got a boost back up to tier two just because Uro shut this deck down. You just cannot. You just cannot. Your five mana, you know, huge payoff threat can't attack into your opponent's Earl that they get on turn four. It was like, it was an, em an embarrassment of riches with the creatures they were playing and the amount of great lengths they were going through to cast it. And I'm just over here, you know, just casting a lightning bolt, <laughs> fill it in my graveyard, playing an unbeatable Uro on turn four and the game ended. So I think Tron, Eldrazi Tron did get a big, a big boost by Uro going away specifically. Yeah, very, very much agree. Yeah. Uh, you know, this is also a deck that likes to play against some of those mid-range decks that Uro pushed out of the metagame, mm -hmm. has Chalice of the Void, which helps it out against the Monastery Swift Spear Death Shadow decks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, as well as some of the combo decks, things like, you know, the Mono White Equipment and Infect Chalice oh, yeah. is great against those. Uh, so this is the kind of metagame that Eldrazi Tron likes to play in. It yep. likes to play against mid-range decks and decks where Chalice is really good again. It's yep. really good. Yeah. Uh, and that's what we're looking at a lot of. So definitely a strong choice right now. And, and you got a wild one against me, huh? Yeah. I'm, I'm more in the category of one where Chalice and one is good. Okay. So it is not, you know, devastating. I'm playing a, I guess it's five color inverter technically. Okay. Uh, really a, an Esper deck that has some wares in the sideboard and some veils okay. uh, to catch with sure, its five sure. color mana sources. Um, so, you know, it looks very much like Ad Nauseam, functions very similarly, but without Simeon Spirit Guide, the Ad Nauseam kill is much less reliable. Mm. So instead, we're going for an inverter kill. You can set that up with, you know, Angel's Grace, Spoils, uh, or I guess not in, uh, like a, a Fast's Oracle kill, okay. uh, where, you know... You, inverter facilitate. Yeah, inverter is one way to facilitate it, or you can facilitate it with Angel's Grace slash Frexian on life, or now Gideon of the Trials, mm. and uh, Spoils of the Vault. You just name a card that's not in your deck. You have all your entire library and, and cast a Thassa's Oracle. Says a lot about the person, what they name that's not in their deck. You know, mine was always Uncle Estevan. Uh, yeah, that was that was my fan favorite. I believe uh, I will be naming Floral Spuzzle. Oh, okay. I like it. I like it. All right. Shall we get to the battles? Let's do it. All right. So I'm going to be going first. And naturally an absurdly awkward uh, Tron hand here. 
Like, really awkward. Um, I think I got a mulligan this one. Cavern, which isn't going to be great. And then two power plants here. Dismember's not going to be that live. I have unbeatable shaper, but, you know, not, not good enough. Hmm. How about yours? I'm not sure. <laughs> Such a collection of magic cards. This is indeed a collection of magic cards. Okay, okay. But are they good? Um, I am... Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to keep this. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to try again here. All right. Um, this sounds much better. Not amazing or anything, but I will keep... Uh, I think we can just get rid of this all is dust. All is dust seems quite bad here, so. Yeah, all is dust, not the best. Yeah, okay, and then I'll play Power Plant and pass to you. Did have a suggestion from chat. Right Muffin says, uh, out of respect, Simeon Spirit Guide should be the only card your name with spoils. Oh, yes, good call, good call. Uh, I will play City of Brass and pass the turn. That's quite smart. Okay, I got a tower, and I'll chalice on one. Uh, that's uh, exactly what I was afraid of with this <laughs> hand. Um, so I am going to respond. I think I have to. Okay. I'm going to cast the Spoils of the Vault. I'm going to go to 19 from City. Okay. I'm going to name Thassa's Oracle. Okay, okay. And you take damage equal, equal to, to each the card, number right? of cards revealed, yep. Okay. Five. Uh, so I lose five. <laughs> okay, you're 14. Uh, exile these, yeah, that's the point. And I'll pass to you. So I'm at 14. Perfect. <laughs> uh, Seacrim Coast, I'll make a blue black, play a Pentad Prism for two. Okay, you're at 13. Yeah. Pass the turn. Okay, draw. Oh, that was an absolutely heinous draw. I will play a Blast Zone, and I'll pass to you. Got a Dark Slick Shores. Okay. And now, the question is whether or not Corey has Thought Knots here. <laughs> Corey doesn't Thought Knot me next turn, I win the game. Okay. Or I could make a play where if you Thought not Thought Knots here me next turn, I lose the game. Oh. It's exciting. Is it though? <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it excites me. Yeah. If he didn't have the Chalice of the Void, it would be pretty easy to just go for it and, uh, you know, try to race, I guess, if you... Uh... Or I can play this, but the problem with that is it doesn't really back up the combo, right? Um... Because then all Corey would just need is, is another land. Decisions, decisions. Okay, I'm going to play the Wish Claw Talisman. I'm going to play it safe. Okay. Like, and if, if pass the turn, if Corey doesn't have the thought, I'll charge. Sure. One tap. A draw. Um. Okay, that was a tilt. That was thy tilt. Um, all right, I will play a Mind Stone. Yep. And I don't have the fourth land, so I'm debating if I want to sack it now. Or not. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'll just pass to you. Yeah, that's sort of what I expected. <laughs> Getting punished? No, but... Okay, okay. I like it better when you're getting punished for mistakes. Yeah. 
for subtle, uh, subtle things? Um, how do I want to play this? So I guess I could have just won the game. <laughs> now I can't. <laughs> Um, I think I'm going to make the natural play with this Wishclaw Talisman. I'm okay. fine to fairy. Okay. Just to bounce it back. Problem is, it's really the only play I can make. Mm. Yeah, because otherwise I could search up... A Tron land. Yeah, uh, which Tron land would I get? <laughs> which Tron land uh, would I get? will require me using a... Uh, Counter on the prism. Okay. So I will go to 12. All right. Play Teferi, bounce the talisman. Okay. Draw a card. Sure, sure. Then I will play Seacrum Coast tapped and pass the turn. All right. Now I'm still deciding if I want to sack Mindstone or just guarantee being able to, you know, do something. I think I like doing something. Is that thing Thought Not Seer? That thing is thought not here. Yeah, I had the kill next turn. I, I, I think <laughs> one of the reasons that I decided to wait was if I drew an untapped land, I could kill you all in one turn if yeah. you didn't have the thought not here. Mm -hmm. So I, of course, drew a tapped land and you had Mind Stone into thought not here. Yeah, of so course, yes. Yeah, so he did fully, get punished. Yeah, fully, fully punished. <laughs> okay, so. Yeah, I obviously have a million Angel's Graces in my hand against your chalice. Yep. No. Would have loved to just, like, you know. Don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be taking. Uh, uh, it's probably just inverter to your facilitator, but maybe there's only like one Thassa's Oracle in the deck. Um, hmm. Hmm. Either way, it breaks up the combo if I take Inverter or Thassa's Oracle. I know whatever one I select for whatever reason is going to be wrong and I'll be very stupid, but. Um, yeah, the more I'm thinking about it, the more I, I feel like I should have just risked going for it because the Wishclaw Talisman is so bad against you, you, know, you having two Tron pieces. Yeah, that is slightly awkward. Um, well, if I... It's probably... Oracle here. I don't know what you do. Yeah, I'll take Oracle. I don't know if that's right. Pass to you. And Oracle. Yeah. <laughs> don't Oracle me. Okay, plus to fairy. Okay. Play Wishclaw Talisman. Okay. Pass the turn. Okay, I will own tip. A draw. We'll attack to fairy. And. So I could just blow up Blast Zone right now if I wanted. I lose Mind Stone, but you lose your two things. I'm still dead to like Inverter Thassa, I guess. No, technically not. Um, or I just do this. That's not bad, I suppose. Um, all right, <clears throat> this is probably better. I'll just play Karn. Yep. Karn seems good. Um, so you can't actually use mana with that, right? Correct. Okay. So then I will search for something. So I can get Tormot's Crypt. I don't know if that does too much. Not really. It's the only thing I could cast right now. Um... I really don't think that is very strong. So I'm just going to get the liquid metal coating and pass to you. Hmm. I'm going to cast some Angel's Grace. Okay. 
The one thing you can do is just Angel's Grace, get it countered a few times, and then Inverter and have that as your library. Yeah, I am thinking about that. Yep. It's not a good plan, though. Yeah, it's not a solid plan, but it is a plan. Uh, it's, it's not a workable plan because you have the Karn. You can just, I guess, how, how many cards do you have in hand? Five. Yeah, you can just Karn for bridge. Yep. Karn for bridge. Next I'm turn sure there's and something else I can get to. You would have to... Uh... Yeah, I got some other options if I draw land. Yeah, I would basically have to hope you never draw lands ever again. Yep. And even then, it might might not be enough. Yeah. <laughs> it's a tricky one. I guess if you didn't draw land of the very next turn, I could then attack the Karn. Attacking the Karn doesn't do a whole lot, though. Oh, God. I've just been... Every draw has been massively awkward. Yep, you got yep. paid off for your mistake. Yeah, we're both playing, uh, you know, some... Uh... Some high variance decks, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just should have gone for it early. I just I didn't realize how awkward the Wish Claw Talisman was. Yeah, yeah that card's always just been super awkward. But yeah. there are times when it's insane. Yeah. <laughs> Most awkward card possible. <laughs> I think it... Honestly, I, th I think I've drawn the most awkward card every single turn. That's good. That's good. At least you got you, the Grace you, of Angels on your side. You, you play Chalice. I drew the third Angel's Grace the very next yeah, turn. Yeah. You took my Thassa's Oracle when it was better to take Inverter <laughs> because I I draw Jace and punish you. Mm, fair. Uh, so, of course, I drew second Inverter. Nice, nice. So you got ma massively paid off. So you're saying I nailed it? And this is a Talisman that doesn't do anything. So <laughs> I am very dead. All right. All right, all right, GG. GG, better player one, no big deal. <laughs> yeah, tricky decks to play against. You know, this is something that I've played against the old school ad nauseum. They definitely don't share. I feel like all those lessons were brained into my head, brained into all of our heads of, of what they're going to do, what to beat them. Uh, yeah. But yeah, this deck has definitely changed. So so. The, the, the key is that Inverter is the most unique card in the deck. Is it? So okay. generally, yeah, there's no other effect of that, right? Right. You uh, know, I guess Leveler exiles your entire library. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but that, they don't usually play that. Whereas, you know, there is a different Oracle. There is Jace. Spoils so, does the same thing for you. As well, you had Chalice on one. But you couldn't cast it. Yeah, yeah. So that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I guess spo Spoils can be can be that effect. So there there is yeah. uh, there is redundancy in the deck. But in that situation. Yeah, no, uh, that makes sense. I thought you maybe just only played one Thassa. So I thought maybe I just won the game. No, there's there's yeah. four of them. Okay, that makes sense. Good to know. We are going to head to the sideboard here and see what we got. I'm a car index so i'm probably not doing too much so uh don't go anywhere we'll be right back with sideboarding here on versus live welcome back to versus live where we are sideboarding in our matchup between the five color inverter and eldrazi tron mm -hmm. on my side i've got a couple wear tears mainly to destroy chalice of the voids yep um can destroy like an ensnaring bridge if i'm on an inverter aggro plan uh but just a solid answer to have I'm also going to bring in Wall of Shards. This is a really good way to slow down Corey's <laughs> aggression. Oh, uh, yeah. I can That's also nice protect one. my Planeswalkers. You know, if I have a Gideon out, the Gideon yeah. is going to be locking down one creature. Wall of Shards can block another one. And it's going to be really hard for you to both disrupt me and break through. Yeah. Uh, but I think this is just a really great cyber card for this deck because you don't care about giving your opponent life. You're winning through completely other means. Yeah. It blocks so many things. And giving your opponent life is actually beneficial to you if you're playing against a Death Shadow. Shadow, Scourge of the Skyclave deck. Oh, so. yeah. Fan me really, down. You can gain four this time. Yeah. How about five now? Like, really, yeah. really cool find. That's awesome. Uh, I'm going to be bringing out the Wish Call Talismans. We saw how awkward they were in game one. Uh, I'm also bringing out Teferi's. We don't have, you know, only walls, really, to protect them, and Teferi doesn't do a whole lot. Yeah. And I'm going to cut one Jace. Again, you know, play, even even with wall, Planeswalker, somewhat difficult to protect. Mm. Jace is, you know, more... is. You know, superfluous. We the first copy you want to have in case you know there maybe there's a chalice on two yep. to stop Thassa's Oracle. So having one is valuable, but you don't really need the second one. I like it. And then from my end, it's really only a product of which cards I don't want in my deck. Dismember being quite awkward, it can like kill a Thassa's Oracle <laughs> if you have like two cards in your library, and I'm able to make it so you don't win on the spot. Pretty narrow there. And then taking out one of the All Is Dust, just bringing in a Mystic Forge, a decent card to draw, but. 
almost never Karn for it. And then a couple relics, which uh, can be decent against uh, aggressive inverter. Yep. And otherwise just canter. Yeah, exactly. Otherwise just cycle through them. No compliance. So. All right. Good old Eldrazi Ton versus Inverter and Modern. What a time to be alive, huh? Oh, sounds reasonable to me. Yeah, yep. Yeah. No, nope, definitely interesting. All right, Rob, you got a question at all? Not right now. Empty Q, if you want a question answered, you're up. Absolutely. Everyone's still just trying to figure out how the inverter deck works. Yeah, yeah, including both of us. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank God I uh, I played the easier side on this. Should I cast my Karn or my Thought Not Seer? And try not to screw up the game too much that way. But, yeah, I'll draw you trying a little bit easier to play. All right. Good start, good start, good start. Oh, uh, even weirder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, hey, wow. I will keep my hand. I think I'll keep two. It's it's really weird, but okay. I'm going to lead on Sheldock Isle. Okay. Got the goods. Um, I guess I will put that one underneath it. That's Seems a cute like one. Impactful, yeah, it's a neat card for this deck. It's so good with uh, with spoils. Yep, that makes sense. All right, I got a map past you. Also has Eldrazi Temple, the best land in the deck. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm going to play Seacrim Coast and a Talisman of Dominance. Okay. And pass the turn. All righty. I have another Eldrazi Temple and an Eldrazi to go with it. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Okay, so you have the big creature to play some defense. You have spoils to try to combo me, or you have inverter. Well, I think inverter, you were not really able to play next turn because you would lose the game. So I guess I'm not that afraid of that. Um, spoils is pretty risky too. Um, if you don't have Phyrexian Unlife or, or Angel's Grace. So I almost think it's the wall and I just try to get you dead before you can find the rest of your stuff. The unbeatable wall of shards. All right, you got me. Okay. <laughs> Okay, pass to you. Unbeatable wall of shards. Yeah, has been called. Pass to. Had to deal with it. Can't beat it. Uh oh, that can't be good. We drew the best possible. Angel's Graves. Yep. Uh, and oh, I, I got an inverter under here. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm just dead, huh? Um. Wait. No, no, I don't have the way to. I don't have the way to kill you. I needed the way to kill you under this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why did I think this was this was a kill? Okay, how you do I kill you next turn? Ross realizes what his combo does. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The more you know. Yeah, Angel's Grace. Get it? You know, able to protect you, so you could deck yourself, but you don't have Thassa's Oracle. So I mean, you could spoil for Oracle. Okay, what do I need to do here? All right, put your brain hat on. Um, I'm glad I'm over here. I'll, be like, I'll just attack with this Eldrazi. That's uh, that's gonna be my plan. <laughs> it's like I'm back in uh, elementary school. Put your thinking caps on, kids. Yeah, yeah. Put your thinking caps on. You gotta find lethal here over the course of two turns, or Corey will beat you down. Um, I wonder if it's like. Well, I mean, I assume the music's still copyrighted, but it'd be funny to use like the Seinfeld like beat as like Corey or as Ross realizes he doesn't have his combo like he thought he did. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Rob, can you work on that while he's thinking about it? Try to get yeah. some copyright. I'm just gonna play Shell Deck Isle. Okay. Oh, uh, that one goes there. Okay. And pass the turn. All right. I don't think I have anything to punish you, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's not going to be a great card, so I'm just going to put the pedal to the metal. I will go to 11. Pass to you. 
And we'll see if you can kill me. It's cute. Okay. Play City of Brass. Okay. Play Wall of Shards. Okay. <laughs> Pass the turn. All right. Uh, a draw. Um... All right, I'll go with uh, Construct. And... I'll attack. Block Smasher. Okay, take four. I go to seven. And... Still think it's gonna be slightly tough for you to kill me. Depending on what's in your shell docs, I mean, if you have Thassa's, if this is Thassa's Oracle, you could kill me. But I'm guessing it wasn't, or you probably just would have killed me. That'd be a safe assumption. Um, so yeah, I'll uh, play Karn. Shut down that talisman. And let's see what we can get. So the Tormod's Crypt, once again, does not really do anything here, and that's the only thing I can cast for free. So it's all just setting up next turn. And, uh, yeah, I guess this is a good one if I can land it. I think I'll get Torpor Orb. And pass to you. Yeah, I agree. That's a good one. <laughs> can he kill me? I hope he can't. I'm at seven life right now. Seven life, so not dead next turn. Okay, I've got to just untap. Okay. Uh, you gain a life. Yes, 21. I can be at infinite. Yeah. Second time you cast Karn, second time I've drawn this exact card the next turn. Excellent, excellent. <laughs> High value on that one. Yeah, that deck looks tough to play. Yeah, I'm not sure if I was supposed to spoils for, you know, some other card, like... And just try to get lucky and not die kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. But you don't even have that much life to play with, you know, so. Like, I, I could have, so you play, like, you played Thought Not Seer on turn two, and then I had my turn three, where turn three was the turn I, I, uh, I don't think I did much of anything. No, turn, or... I guess yeah, maybe turn was turn three the turn I thought I had you dead. Who knows? And then you played thought, and then you played Smasher, and then I played Wall on turn four. Yeah, this is turn five. Um, I drew the Angel's Grace, but I don't know what that does. Um, yeah, now you can't even cast Inverter. Hey, you're in a pickle. Yeah, I think I, I what I actually I think the the no because that that's not that wasn't going to work either. I wonder if I was supposed to God no there was no, because of these shell deck aisles there was never really a turn I could like spoils for um without without the kills being under there yeah. you're you're in a rough spot if you had the kill under there I was dead you know last turn but yeah and I didn't have the mana to like angel's grace plus spoils make sure I hit something good yeah I guess yeah I just I don't think there's anything I could have done yeah you can't even like hope that like oh your oracle is on the bottom and then and then win with that because you play so many of them you know that it's just yeah. actually impossible can I Try to just win with inverter beatdowns. That seems difficult with a wall of shards on the battlefield. And you'll deck. Well, I can, uh, like, you know, play these, get rid of my entire library, shell duck aisle the inverter. Yeah. But then I don't even have second black to play this inverter. Because yeah. Of the Karn. I'd have to take a turn off to kill the Karn to replay the second one. The and second you might one's have not going to battle against bridge, too. You know? yeah. Like, yeah. 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 And you can still just get bridge. 
Yeah, like basically, I have to pivot to the aggro plane before Karn enters the battlefield. Yeah. So that's not going to do anything. So I, th I think what I have to do is... Cry in the corner? No, I think what I have to do is spoils and, and just hit um, uh, Phyrexian on life. Okay, okay. Let's see it. Spin it. So I'll go to six. Okay. And I'll spoil his name for Exion on life. And not Angel's Gracing. No, because yep. I have to cast you on life too. Makes sense. Lose one. <laughs> Impressive. And a five. Impressive. And uh, yeah, I'll play that. Okay. And pass the turn. All right. Well, that was impressive. <laughs> um, I will a draw. Yeah, and I probably cannot kill that unlife. If only you could have done that with the feed the swarm the other day. Yeah. yeah. Um. Okay. Still have a decent play here. I'm gonna play a power plant. I'm gonna go get a liquid metal coating. Um. And gonna attack with these two. I will block the reality smasher, go to one. Okay. Uh and okay, so yeah, once you lose, then you then you go to the poison, right? Yeah. Okay. Um Oh, I already played a land. Um yeah. I will play liquid metal coating and torpor orb. And I will pass to you and then Upkeep, I will hit your city of breath. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. It says... For each card revealed, that is not that card. It says, until you reveal... Oh, it does say other. Okay, okay. sure. So I'm at two. Alrighty. And now I go to 23. I, mean, I, mean, I missed the other on, that, on yep. the text. Yeah, you go to 23. Your city of brass is a city of... Never mind. <laughs> it cannot be used. Shell dock aisle. Okay, okay. You're up. All right, all right. I guess I'll play this other talisman. Okay. Oh, draw. Hmm. All right, I will. Looks like this deck could use some filter lands because the blue mana from Sheldock Isle is often very awkward. Yeah. Turning that into black, black, or white, white could be pretty helpful. All right. I will take up Karn on this. We'll play a Walking Ballista for three. So it's a three, three. So you, you make it an artifact first, right? No, no, no. You just use the plus one ability. Up to one target non-creature artifact. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. yeah, make it an artifact and then make it a creature, then kill it. Then I will attack, force you to use your magic card. Yeah, I'll cast the Angel's Grace. Okay, and uh, yeah, pass to you. Yeah, yeah, so I'm at one. Okay. Which means I still can't cast City of Brass. Yep, now uh, I go to three. 26. And this would be impressive to get out of it from this spot with Torp Orb that shuts down your creature combos and not being able to use talismans. Oh, 
This mm -hmm. would have almost been a good draw. Oh, yeah. But I can't cast it. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah, because you need the, the need, terror need side. Yeah. Mana. <laughs> yeah, mana base just got really, gets really awkward when you can't use the artifact mana. Yeah, and yeah. I, just ha I haven't drawn the... I've needed to draw the blue the blue cards. That's what I've needed. So I think I yeah. want the the Jason for this pity game. I'm actually going to cut one of the talismans. Okay, okay. Yeah, they get awkward with Karn, that's for sure. Yeah, when I looked at my hand, it was it was quite outrageous. I was like, the first two lands, two Ursus Power Plants. I'm like, well, this is awkward. And then two Ursus Eldrazi Temple. I was like, oh, this is interesting. And then Thought Nod and, a, <laughs> and a, um, the 5-5. Five five. So I was like, okay, well, this is this is pretty good. But yeah, just got got pretty awkward on your end. One of the things that this deck doesn't have available to it that Ad Nauseam had was the value Ad Nauseam. If you were yeah. down on resources for whatever reason, you could just cast an Ad Nauseam, draw four or five cards, yeah. and, and refuel. This deck doesn't really have that. Yeah. You know, and I haven't really, just, I just haven't assembled anything. Yep. I've been, and I've been Eldrazi smashing, you know, just yeah. uh, Miko smash. Fed early thought not to use every game, plus Karn, which yeah. is the best card. <laughs> I wouldn't say about early thought not both game. The first one was on turn five, because I missed a bunch of land drops and played Mind four. Stone. <laughs> no, I missed oh, yeah, yeah, you play, yeah. You missed it on turn four. That's when you played the Mind Stone. Some early thought nods have been declared. <laughs> but that game, you also had Chalice. Yeah, that one, that one, one the Chalice was hand. awesome. I think it just may be turning up that my deck is good against yours. You know, yeah. like, it has a lot of stuff that gives you problems. That's what it's seeming more and more, you know. Yeah, Chal, Thought Not, and Karn are all good. Yep. Karn especially more than more than I thought it would be, you know. Yeah, well, one of the underrated ways to attack Ad Nauseam was always attacking its mana. Like yep. I loved bringing in like Stony Silence against them. Oh yeah, or destroying their Lotus Blooms and upkeep and stuff. Yeah. You know, yeah, that that was always pretty nice. Okay, time for a pity game. Oh. Six mana and a Serum Visions is not going to be good enough. Yeah, and I have lands and spells, but they are just not good enough. My mana base is just awful. Tech Edge has got to be pretty heinous against you. Maybe get a Shell Dock Isle, but the old turn three mana reshaper is not great. Not great. All right, Rob, you got a question from our lovely audience by any chance? Not right now. Not right now. Empty Q. Empty Q. All right. Do we? Do you personally have a question you would like to ask me and Ross? Um. Talisman, yeah. Are we gonna ball tomorrow? There we go. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. I would like to ball. I'm thinking of like the turn you thought nodded me, and you left me with an inverter and um and spoils. Yeah. I don't think you have black. I don't think I had enough um, black to cast both. That was my main reasoning. Yeah, not in one turn, but I could have end stepped the spoils on Thassa's Oracle and then untapped and cast Inverter and then just hoped you didn't have another a way to disrupt the Oracle. Yeah. I would have had one uh, one card in my graveyard. Look at my hand, Rob. Name a more iconic yeah. girl here. <laughs> I think I think that I think again that's that's what I should have done. I need to be more aggressive in these games. Be aggressive. Be I'm trying be to get it aggressive. all done in one turn. I should just see my first opportunity and go for it. All right, I think I'll keep my hand. We have one specific plan here. And that is to tilt off Ross Merriam, and I think this hand can do it. Your plan is to tilt me off, eh? It always is, buddy. It always is. Half the time I succeed, half the time I fail. All right, better gotta, hand for you this time. I gotta put that one back. Okay. I'll play Shell Duck Isle. Okay. This one I thought would happen. Um, yeah, I know. I literally know exactly what's happening in this game. What's gonna happen? I can already tell. I can. I can basically tell what's in Corey's hand based on the cards I can't beat. I just figure out what those cards are, and then I'm like, okay, that's what Corey has. So, what do you think my hand is? Mm. I'll let you. I'll let you guess. Um, I know, I already know already. I'm not gonna let you know. Okay. Okay. Well, I know. I <laughs> I can see my hand. <laughs> All right. Well, that was a decent draw. I'll start with this Eldrazi Temple, and I'll pass to you. Okay, I have a City of Brass and a Serum Visions. Okay, okay. Um, I 
dilemma. Just I like I think I like these cards. Okay. But do I actually like them? Um oof. Can we cue up the Jeopardy theme music? Yeah. I'm going to leave them both on top. Okay. <laughs> All right, I have the temple, and I thought not. <laughs> the temple not. All right, what do you got? What do you got? Well, Phyrexian on life seems like the obvious one here. Um, seems like a tricky one for me to deal with. Um, guess you could, yeah, because you unless you have Angel's Grace, no, that wouldn't be enough. So I don't think you can kill me next turn with anything. So yeah, we'll take this and uh, hope that that's good enough. Fast you. Okay. Was that the right hit or did I pick wrong again? Uh, I think that's fine. Okay. Uh, I'll play Reflecting Pool, Talisman of Dominance, take a point for a white and play Wall of Shards. Okay. Just play some defense here. I'm at 19. Okay. Pass the turn. All right. Heinous draw there. Um, I will bring the pain. Block. Okay. Uh, I have the other thought not. I'll take your spoils. And I will play a tower and pass to you. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. My hands are temples and a dream. You can life. 21. How good was that other card you left on top? Not very. Okay. It's not at this point. Yeah. After I took all your goods? Yeah, I mean, turn to thought not is the dream. Yep, yep. <laughs> When you follow it up with another one, not bad. Oh. And I was going to have this pretty well set up. <laughs> but taking these was bad for you? Yeah, having... Oh. Okay. okay. It's the two pieces of disruption in the first three turns. <laughs> yeah, the deck yeah. that is well known for doing nothing for many turns. Hey, I haven't I haven't trawned up it's on you once the, though, so there's there's that. A little much, but yeah, I just got past. Okay, I will draw. Um, crunch in for eight. Block one. I'll go to fifteen. Okay. Um, now let's go with. Gonna need to hit some good ones here. Well, let's go with a, a Mind Stone and a Blast Zone, and I'll pass to you. And I'll keep you go to 23. Yep. And a Ripskies. That is not going to do it. All right. Gemstone Mind. All right. Pass the turn. All right, I'll put a charge counter on this. A one tap, a draw. Um, let's start with sagging this to draw a card. And, yeah, I think it's blast zone o'clock to get in some damage and attack for eight. I go to seven. And pass to you. Okay, well, let's hope I rip it. Okay, you got the out? Ooh. Mm, it's another talisman. I have the, the oracle. I just needed okay. it needed inverter. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I have three cards. I draw to two, and I oracle you. You can play it to stay alive at least. Mm, yeah, but I have literally no way to, to get back in the game. Oh, okay, okay, okay. If you didn't have the second thought knot, then I just go for the spoil. I have five mana. I just go for spoils for inverter. Yep, yep. And I hope I hit it in, in time. My opener was this as the five cards I saw and the blast zone. I'm like, yeah, that beats us a large percentage of your draws, I imagine. I imagine. Yeah, I just. So, I, is this going to be the deck that you're going to sleeve up in the next <laughs> modern challenge? 
<laughs> if you thought not see her is uh, is really good. Yeah, I think yeah. in game, I think both in games one and two, I had spots where I could have just gone for something earlier, um, mm -hmm. and I w would have had a chance to win. Like yeah. Took, yeah, as soon as you took the the wall in game two and and left me with the the spoils, I should have spoils on end step for. Um, and you left me with inverter four Thassa's four Thassa Oracle. And then go for it. Yeah, and then I just sl slam the inverter, hope you don't have another thought not, which you did not that game. You just played the the uh, reality smasher, right? And in inverter's good at you know, stalling there. Yeah, I think I also had Karn, though. So I could have Karned for... Yeah, but Kar Karn's not going to do anything if, I already, if I've already inverted. Karn Kar for Torborb. Well, you can't cast the orbit still. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you had, yep. if you had, if you had, if you had full Tron up into into that, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess so, I probably didn't have anything yeah, else. Yeah, you know, but... I, I think the I think the deck looked. I think I, I was a little tentative in some of the early turns, and that's just not how you 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 could just can't play you that. You've got to treat it as a straight on combo deck. I mean, yeah. it is a straight on combo deck, but it's not. I don't think it's as resilient as ad nauseum was because, mm. like I said, you don't have that you know value ad nauseum to recoup a lot of card advantage. Yeah, and your car your combos are almost always three cards, so. It's it's hard to, you know, find the right pieces if your opponent's thought seized you or thought not seared, you know, whatever the case may be, cut you off of some amount of your resources. So the, the advantage is that you have so many redundant copies of everything that you almost always find something early. Yeah. And, you know, spoils of all just fill, fills in the hole. So I think you you mainly just have to, you know, go for it early and, and, you know, rely on the redundancy to find you a fast combo. Yeah. And I was hoping the redundancy would offer some resiliency where I'd have more outs to draw to. Yeah. And that's just not the case, especially against a deck with pressure. Yeah. And I I, the more aggressive. and more we play and look at it, the more and more I think you're just in a really bad matchup. You know, I, I when we were planning it, it didn't seem as bad on paper, but like I'm just looking down at, at all my options and stuff, and I'm like, Torporb shuts you down, Karn shuts down your mana accelerants. It just, I wouldn't say like completely 80 20 or anything, but I'd say I'm in a favorable matchup. Yeah, but that said, it, you know, if I cast the inverter in game one on the term where I thought about doing it, I win the game. Yeah. Situationally, but I did have, yeah. you know, two thought knots, and, uh, and if I drew a land, you just lose so yeah, i think you your two, play you was two, two thought knots every game yeah some yeah. games you're not gonna have two thought knots, you know uh you know maybe maybe those games will happen yeah, eventually yeah uh but and then game two if, if i go for the spoils like i don't know what the odds are on spoils the vault for a four of there you know i just yeah. have to hit it without dying yeah. right uh you know if i if i go down to four or less life then you can have reality smasher to kill me through the mm. one blocker uh and, and things like that another thought knots here gets me chalice on two gets me yeah i had ballista um, too so yeah yeah mm -hmm. um so uh, so there are you know there, there's some variables there, but I think I have a decent chance, decent chance of winning both of those first two games. Yep. The third game, I just had, you know, at that point, I knew I needed to be aggressive, and I had the play down. I just couldn't be the second thought. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> so. no, I had some good draws. So, all right, that's going to do it for a second round. The one good thing is we are playing for the marbles with viewer-submitted decks, and I got a spicy one. So I have a four-color Yorian Blink deck with, like, a bunch of walls, Eternal Witness, uh, Ephemerate, and that stuff. It, it looks... It looks like a value town of uh, of awesomeness. So yes, and I am going to get my value by attacking with Emrakul and Ooh. having Zachary six permanents. Yes, yes. Okay. Nice okay. little six for two off my through the breach. It's a Grixis breach uh, brew. Looks pretty cool. Awesome. So we're going to take a short five minute break, and we'll be right back with round number three here on Versus Live. Mm -hmm. 